Today we are going to talk about street photography. It's something we've not spoken about much on this channel and it's difficult to do at the moment in particular, but that's not going to stop us because it's Tutorial Tuesday! <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, if that sounds good, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. But of course, this week is no different. We are going to dive in to a tutorial. We're going to talk about street photography and specifically five tips to improve your street photography. Now, first of all, tip number one, what kind of lenses should you be taking with you? Now, of course, a big part of street photography is keeping your kit relatively small, relatively subtle as well. You know, if you're walking around with a, a 70 to 200 in people's faces, it's probably not going to be as subtle, should we say, as having a nice small prime. So I generally recommend shooting with primes for street photography. So for example, I tend to go out with a 35mm and an 85mm. That gives me a nice spread between kind of a slightly wider field of view and then a nice kind of slightly tighter field of view at 85 with, of course, a nice fast aperture as well. And that allows me to get nice blurred backgrounds to isolate a subject if I want to. And also, you know, to, to play around with that aperture a little bit also massively helps with low light as well. Now, both the 35 and an 85 mil are not necessarily gonna be the smallest lenses available, but they're probably not gonna be the biggest either. I tend to avoid zoom lenses for street photography because it tends to be a little bit over the top big. You know, the whole thing becomes very obvious and that can ruin kind of getting those candid moments. It also forces you with a prime lens to kind of push yourself into different positions to actually become part of the photographic process rather than just zooming in and out. So while I love a good zoom lens, and I'll be honest with you, this picture, which I took recently, was on a 70-200, and it's a great way of getting some, some sort of street-style stuff, but at a slightly longer distance, which is especially helpful now with social distancing. I tend to like going for those 35-85 mil primes because of the way it pushes you to think about composition and stuff like that but with actually moving around and getting into the photo. Now, speaking of depth of field and aperture and all that kind of stuff, tip number two is to generally shoot in aperture priority. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, there's lots of different principles of photography that it's good to try and include. So things like depth of field is a big one, you know, things like composition, lighting, all that kind of stuff. But what you don't necessarily want to be thinking about is shooting in manual and having to dial in shutter speed and ISO and all that kind of stuff for every photo, especially if the light is changing a lot, if you're trying to capture candid moments, because that is going to really slow you down and you're probably going to miss at least a few of the moments if you're focusing on actually getting those settings dialed in properly. So I tend to recommend shooting an aperture priority. That means you can quickly adjust the aperture for depth of field purposes. So you can have a nice blurred background if you want to isolate your subject or you can get more of it in focus or anything like that. But it means that the camera is taking, taking control of things like shutter speed and ISO for you just to get the exposure right. Now, if you're shooting in lower light and you're worried about the shutter speed going too low, most cameras actually have a function where you can go in through the menus and set a minimum shutter speed when you're shooting in aperture priority. That can be really helpful for just eliminating that kind of shaky shutter blurriness that you don't want while shooting in this mode. You know, once I realized that I could do this, that was a big deal. So it's worth exploring your menus to try and try and set that in place. Otherwise, you'll find it's much easier to capture these candid moments when you're not having to think about all of the settings. You're just dialing in that aperture to get the depth of field that you want. Now, tip number three, obviously we talked about composition. We talked about all that kind of stuff a little bit and how that is important. Well, it's not always as easy as it sounds, especially if you're trying to capture you know, the perfect moment or something interesting going on. You might have just a second to react. You might not get the perfect composition. You might be a little bit wonky with your shot, something like that. So crop your photos. That's tip number three is crop your photos. I know that a lot of photographers don't like to crop or at least don't like to crop too much. I actually love it. I love being able to in post take a good photo out of a bad photo or just fix a photo or, or just crop into what I think is important in the frame. Or let's say you're shooting with the 35 mil for example, and it's just too wide, but to get the moment, you have to snap the shot. You can't get closer, you've just got to take it. You can crop later in post, and I think that's a really effective way of creating some really good end results. And some of the most famous street photography stuff that I can think of, some of the big ones, are cropped photos, and that's because you know, part of the photographic process, I think at least, is selecting what's in the frame. And if you didn't get a chance to do that at the time when you took the photo, I think it's absolutely fine to do that 
when you get back and you do it in post-production. It can really make the difference between a good photo and a bad photo. You don't need all of the kind of nothingness around whatever your subject is, or maybe you do, but you just want to condense that into a bit more of a contextual shot rather than just having everything that you have to have there because you couldn't move in time to get the shot. Now we've mentioned it a bunch of times, but tip number four is all about looking for moments. It's, it's such a key part of what makes street photography good and interesting. You know, it's so easy, really, to just walk around and snap photos of people as they move about, right? And it can mean nothing. And then that comes through in the photo. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything in the photo. But if you're looking for those specific moments, you know, uh, an interaction between two people or someone, you can feel what someone's thinking or what someone's feeling, you get the emotion out of it. Ultimately, for me, the way I think about this when I'm doing street photography is I think about what is the story I'm trying to tell from this photo? You know, who is the main character? And what are the feelings, the emotions, and all that kind of stuff? It sounds a little bit corny, but it can really help to push you to get a better photo. I don't tend to snap just any photo of people now because it's just kind of boring and I don't want to... I don't want to do that, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to waste my time or, or fill my SD card with just photos, endless photos of just people just doing nothing. I like to look for these specific moments and sometimes that can mean just sitting, watching and waiting. That leads us nicely onto tip number five as well, which is of course to prepare your shot. So like I mentioned, I sit, I watch, I look at different compositions, I see how the light is falling onto different areas and things like that. And then I prepare my shot. Sometimes that means that I find a really nice composition and I wait for someone to walk into that, the right person, the right thing to happen around it. Or sometimes I watch specific people and I think I know they're gonna do something interesting or they are an interesting person. I just need to wait for the right moment. But preparing your shot makes a big difference to that end result rather than just kind of snapping away. There's nothing really wrong with just snapping away. It just means you've got a lot more photos to go through and you might pick one out of 10 instead of, you know, picking a bunch which are meaningful and actually actually good photos. You know, and I think with street photography, it can be so tempting to just snap people, snap whatever, but sometimes you gotta look for that, that photo within the crowd and you gotta take it, and you gotta take it home. That's getting a little bit, a little bit deep now, but you, I think you know what I mean. So those are our five tips for street photography. If you have any of your own tips, I'd love to hear them down in the comments because to be honest, that's just scraping the surface. There's so much that you can do with street photography. It's such an interesting genre. And I can't believe that for so long, I didn't really do it that much. So it's very interesting. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments as well. A big one for me is just getting the confidence to take photos of people, you know, without necessarily asking them first, just getting that, getting that photo, getting that moment. So that's a big one. Any tips about that? I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear what you think. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. And of course, subscribe. We've got new tutorials every week. You've got reviews, you've got all kinds of stuff all the time. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.